Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and today we're going to continue working with our lathe DRO. One of the biggest time savers available on the lathe is the ability to build a tool library, enter the tool offsets once, and eliminate having to touch off every time you change tools. Now that can be an intimidating prospect if you don't know what you're doing, but you might be surprised how simple this function really is. So today we're going to show you how to measure, enter, and recall offsets on our LCD lathe DRO. Let's get started. First things first, we want to be as accurate as possible touching off since we'll be entering these tool offsets to be recalled later. For our database nerds out there, the garbage in, garbage out principle applies here, so take some extra time to make sure you're feeding your tool library good data. I am rushing a little here just to show the process, but if I were setting up a tool library for real, I'd be much more exacting. The method I'm using here is to touch off with some feeler stock. This is the same 25 thou Starrett feeler that I've had in the top drawer of my toolbox forever. No idea where it came from, but I don't think I bought it on purpose. Did I steal it from a job I had 15 years ago? Did it come with a box of junk tools that I bought at a garage sale during the Bush administration? No idea, but it served me well to this point and hopefully it will for years to come. For inserts like this that don't have the clearance to touch off on both axes, it's okay to just eyeball the tip of the tool with the edge of your part. This type of insert wouldn't be turning to any shoulders anyway, so the exact location on the z-axis is not vital. Here I'm demonstrating how easy it is to get the tool to flex and affect the touch off. A variation of almost 10 thou just leaning on it a little. That's why developing a technique with the feeler gauge is important. For this video, I have these three tool holders set up with three different types of tools. When we're entering them into the DRO's tool library, they're going to be tool 1, tool 2, and tool 3. And for visual effect, I've dramatically varied how much stick out each has. So what we're trying to do when we enter these tool offsets is to tell the DRO exactly how much and in what direction the positions of these tools vary from one another. To accomplish that, we need a reference point on the machine, and for that, we've chucked this bar into the lathe, turned a clean surface on the radius, and faced off the end. We'll use the side of the bar as the zero for the x-axis, and the end as the zero for z. That means the front corner can be thought of as coordinate zero, zero. So let's get to entering these tool offsets. We'll start with tool number one mounted to the tool post, and we'll move that to the 0, 0 coordinate at the front corner of our workpiece. Once we're happy with our position, we will zero out the DRO and tool 1 will be considered the reference tool. That means its tool offset is 0 on both axes. Now we can tell the DRO the location of each subsequent tool and how it differs from tool 1. We'll secure tool 2 and touch off at that same 0, 0 corner. Without zeroing out the DRO, we'll take note of the values on both axes, reverse the sign so that the tool offset cancels that value out, and enter that into the tool offset of tool 2. And again, we're going to use the old eyechrometer for quick and dirty zeroing in this video, so don't yell at us in the comments. This is just for demonstration purposes. Doing this for real takes longer, but I didn't think there were a lot of people who wanted to watch me wiggle feeler stock for three minutes at a time. Same thing with tool three. Still not zeroing out the DRO, still referencing tool one, you move tool three to that zero zero point on the machine, Take note of that offset, reverse the sign, and enter those two values in for the tool offset values of tool 3. If you're trying this on your machine and you're getting results that don't make sense, the most common problem by far is flipping the sign and entering a negative value when it should be positive, or vice versa. Of course, the exact keystrokes will vary from DRO to DRO, but any lathe DRO with tool offset capability will follow these general principles.
And now we'll try calling back to those stored tool offset values. We have tool one on the tool post again, and we'll go to that machine zero zero coordinate and zero out the DRO. Now let's say we've finished our operation that uses tool one and we need to switch to tool two. Instead of having to touch off again with tool two, we can go into the tool menu, tell the DRO that we're going from tool one to tool two, and just like that, the lathe knows where the new tool is in space. So if we navigate back to our reference point at the front corner of this bar, the machine reads as close to zero zero as can be expected for the amount of effort that we put into touching off. It's within a couple thou just from eyeballing it. If we had spent more time edge finding, we would be even closer than that. To show that wasn't pure luck, we'll change to tool three and tell the DRO that we are switching from tool two to tool three. And guess what? The DRO now knows where the tool is and navigating to that reference point on the test bar gives us that zero zero coordinate. Using this method, you can go from any tool to any other tool and start using that tool without having to touch off. So there you have it. If you're making a part that requires a lot of tool changes, using the tool library can be a massive time saver. I don't know why so many people ignore this feature on their lathe DRO, and I can only guess that they don't realize how simple the concept is once you wrap your mind around it. Now this was just a general overview, so if you're trying this on your lathe and having trouble, remember you can always call or email our tech team, and we can go over these concepts more with you one-on-one. -on -one. Until next time, thanks for watching.